Hi, I'm Mauro, and today I want to talk about how you can add dynamic geometry to Quiza scene. Quiza allows you to easily import animated scenes created in 3D software like Blender or Maya into your application. But sometimes, just displaying a predefined scene is not enough. In a more complex application, sometimes you may want to combine your imported scene with geometry created dynamically in your code. For instance, in this scene in our cluster demo, the car model was created in Blender and imported into a Quiza scene as a GLTF model. However, the geometry of the road is created dynamically by the application. In this other scene, again we have a Quiza scene with a car model imported from Blender, but this time our code is reading data from an OpenStreetMap file and using it to create a geometry for the 3D map. So how can we add custom geometry to a Quiza scene? First we need to talk a bit about how a Qt3D scene is represented. A Qt3D scene is a tree of entities, and each entity may contain multiple components. Some common components include QMaterial, which describes the material used to render the entity, QTransform, which describes how the entity is placed within the scene, and QGeometry Renderer, which describes a 3D mesh. When you import a GLTF file with Quiza, usually you don't need to worry about any of this because Quiza will automatically create a tree of entities and components for you. But what if you want to create your own geometry in your code? Well, in that case, you can write your own geometry renderer component and attach it to an entity. Let's see how we can do that. There are four classes that we need to know about. QGeometry Renderer tells Q3D how to render the entity. For instance, are we going to use triangles, lines, points? Each geometry renderer has a QGeometry, which is basically a collection of vertex attributes. For each vertex property, there is a corresponding attribute. For instance, we can have an attribute describing the vertex position, another attribute describing the normal vector at each vertex. We can also have an attribute describing the vertex color, and so on. Each attribute is linked to a QBuffer, and this is where we actually store the mesh data. Now, let's see how we can implement this in code. To show how this works, I have created a simple example. Here I'm doing everything in QML, but in a real application, you might want to implement your geometry renderer in C++. As you can see, here I have a Q3D scene, and inside my Q3D scene, I have a Quiza scene entity. Inside my Quiza scene entity, I have a GLTF importer, which adds a GLTF model to my scene. And I have added another entity to my Quiza scene, which has two components, custom mesh and custom material. Custom material is a simple Quiza material that should paint my geometry with a flat color. Here I'm using red. The other component is our geometry renderer. I wanted to keep things simple in this example, so I'm going to render our geometry with lines. So here I'm setting a primitive type to lines. In a real application, you probably want to use triangles instead. Our geometry renderer has a geometry, which has a single attribute, the vertex position. As you can see, my, my attribute has a bunch of properties that describe how the vertex data is laid out inside the buffer. For instance, I have floating point numbers. Uh, each position has three components, X, Y, and Z. And I have six vertices. And finally, 
we have the buffer where we are storing the vertex data. I have six vertices, and since each line requires two vertices, my geometry renderer should display three lines. Okay, so let's try to run the example and see if it works. And there we go. Here we have the GLTF model that was loaded by the GLTF importer. And our entity with our custom geometry renderer displaying these three lines. This is what I had. I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.